Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by King of the Cage middleweight champion, Sean Strickland. Sean, how are you? I'm doing all right. Just, uh, just hanging out, back to the train. Sean, you recently picked up a win at King of the Cage Unification. How did you feel about your performance in the fight? Honestly, I mean, I was happy I won, but I mean, I was really disappointed. I know I didn't perform like I should have, but, you know, that gave me a little bit more experience and a little disappointed. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was a very close fight. I didn't see any of the footage. I, I couldn't find it anywhere, but I was following the event. The King of the Cage people had posted stuff on Twitter, and some fans were tweeting about it, so I saw some of those. Could you walk us through, round by round, what was happening in the fight? Because a lot of people thought it could have gone either way. Yeah, well, I mean, the first round, you definitely won. I'll give it to them. I'll give it to them. Um, I'm, more of, I'm more of a wrestler. I mean, I'm more of a jiu-jitsu guy, but before I stepped in the cage, I told my trainer, like, I'm going to win on my feet or I'm going to lose on my feet. Like, I'm not going to the ground, you know? So, uh, the first round, he took me down and he just kind of laid on me. And it definitely, it threw me off, you know? Because when you have something in your mind, like, to, your game plan to go one way and it goes a different way, it just throws you all off. So, the first round, he pretty much just laid on me. And then the second round, I came out a little bit more lively. And then I just, uh, just tried to jack him up and throw a lot of kicks. And then... We, we, we did some decent little kickboxing. and I think I landed a lot more kicks in the second round, and I landed a lot more strikes. And then I think I definitely won the, the second round. And then um, the third round, it was uh, it was the same thing. Just kept kicking and punching him, and then grass single took me down for a good, like, 20 seconds, and I got back up. And then I hit him with some good elbows. And, you know, like I said, I wasn't impressed with my performance, but mm-hmm. I'm sure we have a rematch. And if we have a rematch, it's definitely not going to go the distance. Mm-hmm. So, before the decision was read, you were pretty confident that you had done enough to get it, or were you still up in the air thinking, eh, you know, it might go either way? From a fighter's standpoint, when you're fighting in someone's backyard, to beat him, you have to do a lot. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, he's a fan favorite, you know, like, so when you have to, when you're fighting someone in their own home, you have to do a lot. So, I mean, I thought I clearly won, but there was that doubt in my mind just because I was fighting their local guy, you know, like, big drawing crowd, so, I mean, I, w- I was pretty nervous, but I was happy with the decision. Mm-hmm. You said you weren't happy with your performance in the fight, but you got to be happy with being the first guy ever to defeat Josh Bryant in his home state. You know what it is? It's like, I mean, Josh Bryant, he's good, but, I mean, I'm way better than him in every mm-hmm. aspect, mm-hmm. wrestling and everything. And I train harder than him, and, and just the fact that he took me down, he landed a punch on me, you know, I, I went back after that, it just irritated me, because I know I'm better than him in every way. And I'm sure like a rematch probably, I uh, think rematch maybe March or later. And it's just a distance. Like, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he missed weight, and this was changed to a non-title fight, correct? Yeah, he came in about six pounds over, but, I mean, you know, uh, I'll just fight him anyways. <laughs> I'll fight him again if he comes over weight. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Now, what happens? Because he has the interim belt. Does he no longer have that? And you unified oh, yeah, it? No, or? The, uh, Yeah, no, it's, uh, well, I don't, I don't, I don't really know, to be honest, yeah. but either way, I hope he has it, because I want to fight him again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, is this is this just you wanting to fight him next, or is this something that they've they've kind of hinted about putting talking, together? Oh, I was go ahead. talking promoter, and he mentioned something, maybe in March, and if he has, uh, he has to win a couple more, and if he wins, uh, he'll definitely get the rematch, and I got my fingers crossed for him. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Leading up to the fight, a lot of people had thought that Josh Bryant was going to be your toughest opponent just because, you know, he went through the Ultimate Fighter, fought briefly in the UFC, has been around for a, for a while now. Was he the best best opponent that you've had, do you think? No, honestly, I mean, every like every opponent I have, I mean, I look at them like, you know, they're going to be the best, even if it's even if I'm not going to be the best. Stylistically, he was a difficult opponent for me. Just because um, he was backing up a lot, or or with the takedowns, I mean, so it, you know, to make fight, and and he had an awkward style for my style, but I mean, he's one of the hardest, and I know that I'm gonna have a lot tougher fights than him, so you know. Mm-hmm. And just curious, uh, he got the interim belt because uh, you were supposed to fight him, I believe, in September, and you got injured right before the fight, a couple days out, I believe it was, or a week out, I think. And what exactly happened? Because people were kind of surprised when, you know, one minute you couldn't fight, and then they put an interim belt, and then the next minute, you know, you're back again so soon, back in December fighting. You know, what exactly was this injury, and how severe was it? Mm-hmm. kickboxer about a week before it was my last sparring day and we were just drilling kicks and I mean we were sparring a little bit too hard we got carried away and I think just over the months of kicking my knees I stepped wrong and it felt my knee slip and then I I fell down and started swelling up and I went to the doctors and they said that my knee was so inflamed it's not stable and you know if I fight 
And um, to be honest, I shouldn't have fought. Like, <laughs> I fought way too soon. I, I wasn't mm-hmm. able to run for this fight. I didn't do any kickboxing for this fight. I probably should not have fought him, but after the fight, he after he beat Johnny Carter, he looked in the, in the camera and said, if Sean ever gets better. Mm-hmm. So I was just thinking in my mind, now, fuck that. Like, I'm fighting this guy. You know, I, mm-hmm. I don't care if I have to hop on one leg, I'm going to fight this guy. Mm-hmm. How were you able to cut weight for this fight with not being able to run? Oh, man, it was so hard. Like, it was just my diet. I mean, my diet was definitely key to this fight. But, and a lot of, just a lot of bad work, you know. I mean, I, I definitely wasn't on, I'm not making excuses, but, I mean, I wasn't on my top performance for mm-hmm. this fight. I think my injury had something to do with it. I should have to be getting a knee surgery probably in a few months, so definitely, definitely help my performance. Mm-hmm. In the, the little pre-fight video le- leading up to this fight, I think they show it for the intro of the event. You said that you didn't feel like you were the champion until you defended the belt. Even though this wasn't a, a you know a title fight uh, per se, it, it still kind of was like a defense. Do you f- do you feel like the champion now? To be honest, dude, I've always felt this way. I mean, that belt doesn't mean anything to me mm-hmm. because I look at it like this: there's going to be guys down the road that that may you know that I'm going to have to fight that just because they didn't get the title. I, it doesn't make me better than them because I, that I got the title shot first. So, I mean, every guy I fight, I look at them like they're the champion and I have to beat them. Mm-hmm. Now, you said that March, that, that that's probably what you're looking at for coming back. Who are some of the guys that, that you think are in line for for your title? Because John Cisneros, he fought yesterday. He got knocked out in nine seconds. He was uh, undefeated and he was uh, looking like he was going to be uh, ready for a title shot. Yeah. Who, are some, who are some of the guys... That you think you know would make make good matchups and be a good fight that would make sense for a title. Oh, I, I definitely I was looking forward to Johnny Sinceros, but I mean that's a fight. You know, I thought Johnny was going to win, mm-hmm. but you get clipped and everyone everyone loves you when you're winning, but right. you know you you make a mistake and you get knocked out, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I knew that guy wasn't good. But no, I thought he was going to win, and I'm, you know, I'm sure Johnny will get a title shot. You know, after he recovers, and my next fight I should be fighting a guy named Bill Albrecht. And then um, after that one, I mean, I got some tough ones lined up. Maybe probably um, Josh Bryant. And then I know um, Scott Smith just signed with Keenan Cage, so he's probably going to be down the line somewhere. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Oh, yeah, no, I, uh, after, I mean, I definitely, I have some fights already pre-lined up that I have to fight, and if I win. And that's one of those fights that I'm definitely looking forward to. I mean, if you're fighting a guy like that, because if you beat a guy like that, you know, it means, like, I'm ready, like, you know, I'm not, it's not luck, it's not anything, you know, like I'm actually good, so I'm right. definitely looking forward to that fight later on down the road. Right, and, and and those are the fights that, especially on the the medium circuit. I wouldn't say that King of the Cage is a low. They're they're a good show. The medium circuit, not not quite UFC, but you know, not you know some random show in the middle I mean, of nowhere. They're, they're not like I mean, right. UFC is the best organization right. in the world. Right. Right. world class fighters. And it doesn't matter what show you're in. You know, the long term goal is this UFC. Right. Right. It doesn't matter what show you fight for. Right. Exactly. But what I was going to say was a fight with Scott Smith, you know, a guy with big show experience, that would be, you know, a fight to really show people, you know, hey, am I ready to get to the big stage? Because, you know, that's kind of been matchmaking to show off prospects or to show somebody like him who's, you know, fallen on hard times to, to build himself back up. So that'd be a great fight, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, no, it would be a, it would be a great fight. And, and later, I mean, it probably won't be till you know, like, next year, but when it does happen, I'm, I'm excited for that. <laughs> mm-hmm, definitely. And you mentioned it earlier, you said that the belt really doesn't mean that much to you, but but it's got to mean something to you, right? Because you, you've basically, you know, you've started in King of the Cage, you've worked your way all the way up to the title, and now you got it. it doesn't... I've, I've been around, I've trained with a lot of guys, a lot of those other organizations, and I see that belt just gets right to their head. They get the belt, and they start thinking, oh, I'm the best. It's like, mm-hmm. no, you're not the best. Like, yeah, you you won the belt, but you haven't fought this guy and that guy and that guy. So how do you feel like you're the best? And you haven't fought them. You just got the you just got the title opportunity first. Mm-hmm. Like you're you're never really a champion because you can't fight every single person in the world. I mean, so I just try to keep that my outlook. That, you know, no matter what happens, like the next guy fighting, he's a champion. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I understand. And, Sean, I'm just curious, uh, your nickname, Tarzan, I, I know you used to have really long hair. Is that where that comes from? Yeah, you know what it was? Because, I mean, I turned pro when I was 16, and I started training when I was about 14. And um, the long hair, and every time, every time I bar, it's just like, you know, it was a battle, no matter who I was with, the guy could have been 25, but I was, I was in there to knock him out. 
And everyone started calling me like ape shit and cowboy and Tarzan. <laughs> I'm like, well, if I have to pick one of them, I'm going to pick Tarzan. So I thought Tarzan stuck. Right. Why'd you decide to get rid of the hair? Just curious. You know, I want to grow it back out, but it's just so, it's an inconvenience. I mean, when I'm training, like, I'm training so hard. I got to mess with my hair and brush it. So I feel like mm-hmm. a chick, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm a fighter. I shouldn't be concerned with time looks. I just shaved it and just get more focused. Mm-hmm. You mentioned your goal is to be in the UFC. You're undefeated right now. Uh, you know, what do you think it's going to take for you to get there? You mentioned, you know, a fight with a veteran, uh, you know, j- just an example, Scott Smith. Is it going to take you fighting against those kind of guys to get there, or do you think it's just going to take wins regardless against who they are as long as you keep this undefeated record intact? You know what? I mean, I probably shouldn't say this, but with a guy like Josh Bryant, when I fought Josh Bryant, I should have knocked him out. I should have beat him in the first round. Like, I wanted more experience, but I mean, I should have, I should have just outclassed him every way. And I know I can, and I know I'm, I'm good at do that, but after looking at my performance, you know, you got to really assess yourself and you say, well, am I ready for those, the top guys? Am I ready? You know, and for my performance, I know that, I know that I'm good enough to hang with them, but I don't know if I show it in the ring yet. So, I mean, I definitely need more experience. I take it mm-hmm. fight by fight, you know, mm-hmm. sure. how I perform, how I look, my fight, what's the record. So, I mean, it's really just fight by fight. You know, Kenny Cage has, has done a lot for me, and I definitely appreciate all their help. And, I mean, they, I started with Kenny Cage, and, you know, without them, I, you know, I don't really know where I'd be. Right. Sean, before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you would like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? I uh, just want to thank Kenny Cage, and, um, my team sequence, you know, the family, John Munoz, Scott where I'm at. And, um, you know, I'm, I hope I'm going to be around for a long time. i got a lot left fight in me, and thanks to all the fans that are supporting me. Thanks for the interview. I appreciate it. And, you know, that's it. Sean, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it and can't wait to see you back in the cage. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. Save my number anytime. Call me up. <laughs>